posting a picture of a suspected criminal on your timeline or forwarding their picture via messaging services could land you in jail. Police say publishing photos of suspects before they appear in court is illegal and it applies to various social media and communications platforms. Let's discuss this with Ntabi Singh Dubazana from Dubazana Attorneys. Thank you very much, Ntabi Singh, for speaking to us this afternoon. So tell us, what does the law say about this and what's the reasoning behind it? Well, firstly, the suspect would have to be charged first and then appear in court. So now if we are posting pictures of a suspect who has yet to be charged and who's yet to appear, have their first appearance in court, it might be seen as defeating the ends of justice, one. Two, it might be also seen as... Um, infringing on the rights of, of, of the accused. Just because you're now an accused person in a crime, no matter how serious or not serious it is, your rights in terms of Section 35 for the Constitution still remain intact. So if you're now your picture or your, your information is now publicized into the into the country and you're yet to be charged, you... you uh, the person who's publishing that, whether you are forwarding it from somebody who, who sent it to you or you're the originator of the actual source of information, you might land yourself in, in, in prison for defamation of character, uh, otherwise known in, in criminal law as criminal urea. So that is the, the reasoning behind all of that. And also the, the accused may have a civil claim against you as well for defaming him or her uh, by posting their picture in the public before he's even had a day in court. Because you must realize sometimes matters do get nolly, um, nolly prosecute, which means that they get removed from the court door even before the accused can appear. So now the prosecutor goes through the docket and realizes that there is no case here. And already we've been splashing the name of Ntabisim all over because she committed this crime. And now she never appears in court. We've already yeah. gone against her rights in that aspect. Ntabi Singh, is the same true for video footage of the crime being committed? And tell us about the timeline. So if a picture or video is posted after the, the suspect's first appearance, is that okay? Um, that is a bit of a gray area uh, in terms of whether he, after, after he's appeared in court, because usually when he has or the person has their first appearance in court, the matters postponed for further investigations, right? So if the video of the actual crime being committed is not yet part of the, uh, of the, of the investigating officer's information in the docket, then it may lead to being uh, seen as obstruction of justice or defeating the ends of justice because it might be altered. It might be the original video that's getting, um, what, what is this? when you alter a video and adding things that are not supposed to be there and all of that. So it's rather safe to stay away from posting anything pertaining to any crime, especially these uh, high profile cases. Mm -hmm. Stay away from that. If you receive anything, don't take it forward, delete it from your phone, because this also applies to chats in, in, in your WhatsApp groups as well. It can be that you as the, group, as the group admin, as well as the members of the group in WhatsApp, you'll be held liable for the actions of the people within the group. What we've seen, what I've seen um, on Facebook, on, on various social media platforms, is victims of crime uh, posting a picture of the, the alleged perpetrator saying, be careful of this person, he did X, Y, or Z to me. Um, if he approaches you, beware, he doesn't have good intentions or she. Um, so even if the citizen is trying to assist the police in finding or capturing a suspect or a criminal, or even if someone is trying to protect uh, their fellow citizens, is that still seen as an offence? Yes, actually it is. I know it sounds very unfair, but it is, uh, it is a situation whereby you cannot infringe on the rights of another person because your rights have, al have also been infringed upon. So uh, unless it can be, when it goes to court, it can be proven in court that it was pertaining to, let's say, Section 36 of the Constitution, which is the limitations uh, clause, which is limitations of one's rights and justifiable limitation, then um, it can be said that the person, the victim who had sent the video and the picture and saying that such and such a person did this to me was justified in infringing on the privacy and the uh, a dignity of the person, of the accused, of the person who's implicated within the video. Uh, so, but that, that will be argued out in court, of course. But um, before it goes into court, I would just say that rather open a, a, a criminal case against the person who did you wrong and then let the courts decide on guilt or innocence. Just now you're looking at a civil suit 
if there's not sufficient evidence that you, you were indeed a victim of this specific crime, and then the accused is found not guilty. And now, after that, he has a civil claim against you in your personal capacity for um, defaming him in public. What's the impact for community watch groups who may be trying to protect those within the community? Listen, there they are not the SAPS. It is it is a well-intentioned thing that we're trying to protect ourselves in the community. Um, but I don't think it's a wise idea to publicize a picture of a person uh, that is uh, presumably com committing certain offenses within the neighborhood. Um, just now. It, when it does get out, it, maybe it is a case of mistaken identity. This person just happened to walk by, and then we assume because he's not familiar or she's not familiar within our neighborhood that they are committing the crime. It is safer rather that the person who has been a victim of a specific crime go and open the docket so you can describe or point out the accused or the suspect to the SAPS and then let them take it from there. Because we're going to find ourselves in a situation whereby courts have decided even in employment, in labor, labor matters, whereby you will say something on social media and then you will get fired as a result of that, even though you presume it is within your private sphere, it has nothing to do with work. You might find yourself lending yourself in hot water as a result of such actions. Well, thank you very much for clarifying that for us. That was Ntabi Singh Dubazana from Dubazana Attorneys.